Hey there! Welcome back to another mini rant, this time on canceled DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, this is a topic that just came to mind because I was doing some research. I was just looking around for stuff to watch. I looked on a list of what people like to call the scariest TV shows. And on that list, they mentioned Werewolf the TV series. And I've never heard of Werewolf the TV series. I don't think I said werewolf properly before. Like, werewolf? What What? What the hell? Woolworths? Wool, wool, Woolworth, the TV series? Uh, werewolf, the TV series. And I'd actually never heard of the show. And actually, w <laughs> that's not necessarily true because once I did my some research on the show, then I was like, oh, that's the show I remember reading a message board about on Synapse. Ah, okay. And I was curious about the show because the article said that it featured practical makeup effects by Rick Baker, who, I'm, who I am a huge fan of. And the general gist of the story was that it was kind of like the Incredible Hulk TV series, but with a werewolf, which interested me. So I was like, okay, where can I get it? Oh, wait, I can't get it? Why can't I? And then... Then that started getting the wheels turning in my head, and then the memory popped back in there. And then I was like, oh, now I remember. Werewolf is the TV show that was canceled. The, in term, you know, the show was canceled after its first season when it aired in 1987 uh, on Fox. But it was canceled again when it was supposed to be released on DVD by Synapse. And I remember this. Because it all came, it all came back to me when I was looking up Werewolf, and then I was like, "Yeah, I was." I remember being on the message boards because I was, uh, I joined because I was a big fan of Synapse, and also I was really excited for their upcoming release of The Kindred, and of course that also ties into this video as well because The Kindred was ultimately canned as well. It was ultimately another canceled release because of some unknown reason like uh, Synapse just said oh rights problems and I'm like what are these rights issues who owns the rights to the kindred it sucks that the best film that the Obro brothers have directed or Obrow or Brow uh, is not on DVD or Blu-ray the Dorm that Drip Blood is on DVD uh, I think that which is also known as Pranks uh, the Power is on DVD. Uh, their other film that they did, I think it was called Soul Survivors. That's on DVD. One of the directors, anyway, Stephen Carpenter. I think it's Stephen Carpenter and Jeffrey Obro. I got. They're not the Obro brothers. It's Stephen Carpenter and Jeffrey Obro. Obro. God, I can't say his last name. God. Ah, it's just for some reason, just messing me up. I apologize for my stuttering nonsense. I'm just riled up because this is bullshit. So, it's not on DVD or Blu-ray because of rights issues. My answer to that is, why can't there be some deal in writing where somebody like Synapse or Shout Factory can just buy the rights to something that's up in the air and they can't find the guy who owns the rights? And if the guy comes forward and provides legal proof that they own the rights to whatever the company is planning on releasing on home video, then they can get a lump sum from Shout Factory or Synapse as soon as they provide proof that of ownership. Why can't that happen? Well, probably because of all the convoluted rules and regulations that exist in the legal system, apparently, or in the copyright system. That's a whole other argument, and that's pretty much the only thing I wanted to say when it comes to that. But the main thing about this is so I can kind of vent about Werewolf the TV series. Because... When I did the research, I realized that this show has not only been canceled once, but two times when it comes to a DVD release. And wow, that's that's bad. I mean, once is bad enough, but twice? So the second time, uh, Shout Factory is going to do it. They even had pre-orders and everything, which if you want to see a really sad site, go to Amazon and type in Werewolf, the, the TV series. And you'll find a picture and an image for a DVD that will never be released, that was up for pre-order, but it says, unfortunately says, this title is not yet, is no longer available. And we don't know if it ever will be. It's cool looking cover art. 
they uh, they were going to remaster the show. They'd actually already spent money remastering it. They had actually spent money on features. They were it was it wasn't enough of a treat for fans of the show. I mean, I've never seen the show, and I really want to see the show now. Uh, so, so much so that I I tracked down a bootleg somewhere. That's the only way I can watch it is on a bootleg. I mean, that's the type of thing I'm talking about. I normally don't pirate things unless I absolutely have to. And in this case, I can't. I cannot watch the show in any other way. It's just impossible. So it doesn't air on TV anymore, and it's not available on home video to buy legally. So the show was given the right treatment. It was remastered. Shout Factory spent money in interviews with, I don't know, maybe even Rick Baker. I don't know. We have no idea. But apparently there was just a lot of features. From what I read, they even the commentary tracks maybe and definitely had some interviews ready. Whole bunch of features. And just like Synapse, the music rights issue reared its ugly head and boom, the release was canceled. And it's been canceled indefinitely for many years. For like a couple years now, or even longer than that. Because this is before Shout Factory, I think, went into Scream Factory. Because this is, they split off into Shout and, and two different things, you know, because Scream Factory is a part of Shout Factory. And they just exclusively release horror and maybe some sci-fi stuff. But Shout Factory... Uh, hadn't really done that yet, so they're releasing stuff like Swamp Thing, and I think they were going to do Werewolf at that time, and then everything just fell through. So, and that sucks. That bites. That really does bite. And now, it's like this show is going to be forgotten about, or it'll be kept alive by the fans, but the copies that do remain of the show will eventually degrade to the point where they're unwatchable or cannot be watched in any other format or whatever. I mean, that's kind of what happens with something as old as this. Uh, although the show thankfully was aired on Chiller a while back and somebody was thoughtful enough to do some Chiller rips, but the pilot wasn't. The pilot's only aired once. And so the only way you can find the pilot is on some VHS rip that does not look that great. So, this sucks. I would have gladly paid money to buy the show. I would have done that. But I can't. And I mean buy the show legally. Now, that's what I don't get. And, and, and I don't think it was rights issues from Sony or for the people who own the rights to the show. That wasn't the problem. It was rights issues with musicians. And the rumors are... And I even remember seeing these two names mentioned in the message boards on Synapse. Rumors are that, and I could be confusing the two. It could have been just Shout Factory and Synapse was not going to do a release. But I could have sworn that Synapse was going to do a release as well. But just ran into rights issues. Now, and that was going to be like a huge release for Synapse. Because they hadn't really done a TV show before. Uh, maybe before that point, And they were going to deck it out with features as well. But just things didn't work out. Just like with the Kindred. But I know the Kindred is one of, is definitely. That's definitely a fact. I know that for sure. Either way. Maybe it was just one release that was cancelled. But regardless. It still bites. So. The rumored musicians are Timbuk3, which is a band that released the song, that are well known for the song, The Future's So Bright, I Gotta Wear Shades. Apparently not if you're the werewolf of the TV series, because the future's so dark, you don't gotta wear shades, because there's no sun in sight. That is, if they really were involved in it. Now, Shout Factory did a press release saying that, oh, Timbuk3 and Mike and the Mechanics, which is the other one, which, first off, who the fuck are Mike and the Mechanics? I've never heard of this band. Have you heard of this band? I've never heard of this band. I, I mean, maybe they sang a song that I might recognize if I heard it, but I, I, right off the top of my head, I cannot say I have actually heard of this band or even remember anything that they've done. Uh, so if they were involved in basically making it so the release of the show became impossible, all i got to say is, who the hell are you? 
this would have helped you because it would have given you more exposure than the zero exposure than you have right now. In fact, I don't understand why any music owner or rights owner would want to ban a release of a film or a DVD uh, or a TV series on DVD or Blu-ray because it's more exposure for you, it's more advertising, and if it's a song that you're worried about, well, then somebody could hear the song in the show or the movie and be like, man, I like that song. I'm going to go in and buy that on iTunes. Well, now that'll never happen because you just refuse to allow that to happen or just something happened and it just wasn't something you allowed to occur. So you'll never get any money out of it or any extra album sales from it. So if it was to, and also, I don't necessarily buy what Shout Factory has to say. I know I should, but my theory is and this is just a theory. Tim Buck Three and Mike and the Mechanics are probably involved with the reason why the show was not released, but they don't want to get sued by them. So in the press, they say they're not, they're they're in the clear. I mean, why would Shout Factory even say outright, "Okay, these people are responsible for screwing us over and screwing you over"? Anyway, that's just that just doesn't happen in terms of business practice, at least not normally. So, I, I don't I don't put a lot of stock in that, to be honest. So Timbuk three, they, there was like a song. So they got the future so bright, you got to wear shades. Mike and the Mechanics had a song that was in the pilot, which might probably explains why the pilot is never aired again, other than on uh, TV back in the day. So I, I do think there where there's smoke, there's fire. If where well, the pilot episode is not did not even air on Chiller. I would think that there's something going on with the rights issues of the music for that particular episode. But why did all the other episodes show up on Chiller, but then the other ones did, but the ones with, you know, the one with the future so bright, we got to wear shades, you know, that showed on showed up on Chiller, and that wasn't a problem, but on DVD or Blu-ray, it's a problem. I, I, I don't get that. And another one, another artist that's rumored, and I could definitely see this being the case, Bob Seger. So because apparently Against the Wind played in the background of one scene, and, well, that was all she wrote, and maybe Bob Seger uh, asked way too much money for the rights, for royalties, which right off the bat, fuck off. If, if you're someone like Bob Seger, you already have enough money. Like, come on, man. Shell Factory, some they're trying to get going. They're try they're like a fledgling company. Like throw them a bone. And also, you already have a lot of money. Why would you turn down more money? Oh, I don't want extra money because I don't get the whole piece of the pie. Uh, you know, I don't want a couple slices. I want all the slices. And if I can't get all the slices, then you get no slices, and I get no slices. This makes no sense to me. I don't understand this thought process. At all. I never have. And this happens with Hollywood too. This happens a lot of places. This whole, you if I don't get the whole slice, the whole pie, you don't get anything and I don't get anything. I mean, it's like, do they think, well, if I don't get it, then you don't get it. But you don't get it either. So you just lost out. When If you want more money, if you're all about this money, 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 all that kind of stuff, then... Why wouldn't you just be like, okay, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take some money versus no money. Because some money is better than nothing, which is what you get by being a greedy son of a bitch. Now, I don't know the facts, because it wasn't there, but if that's the case, come on, man. Second, I've also heard that it could be songwriters or people who own the rights to the music like WMG or these other places like that. Sony, come on, you already have more money than God. Just give it. Give, just give it the shelf. Just, just quit it. Like, what the hell is your problem? Why do you have? Why do you? Why do these people have all these hairs up their asses about some show from 1987 that aired for one season? And it, it's just like, why? What? What's the problem here? Some money is better than nothing. Am I crazy? And then the songwriters thing, it's like, who the fuck are you? Who the hell are you to take umbrage at this? Who the hell are you to be upset or to make demands 
and raise the royalty price through the roof. I mean, who the hell are you? You just wrote the song, for fuck's sake. I mean... So, and also, if it's a song that hasn't aired on the radio and it's not in public consciousness in years, and if you're a rights owner to that song, like Mike and the Mechanics, like why would you turn that down? That's extra exposure that, that that you don't have right now. So none of this makes any sense as to why this show has possibly, but I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm correct here, has been blocked, has been canceled from release two times, all down to two. Just all down to music. All all of it is music. Now, that kind of explains why stuff like maybe Rad isn't on DVD or Blu-ray. Because of music and bullshit and royalties. And has way too much money for royalties. And if it's somebody like Sparks. Like, I'm like one of the only people who know who you are. So why are you complaining about, oh, I don't want my, my uh, I need more money. Sparks, come on. Like Sparks aren't flying right now. Music that you can dance to. Yeah, it, only if you pay me a lot of moolah. Now, I don't know for sure if that's one of the bands that's uh, the reason why Rad's not on DVD or Blu-ray. But, you know, that that's just... that's I'm just throwing that out there. It, it's just all for the sake of entertainment. I could be totally wrong. I don't know anything when it comes to that. But I think that that's a theory that why the show's not on DVD or Blu-ray. And of course, you got other stuff like Steven Spielberg just cock blocking the Poltergeist special edition. Uh, I, you've heard that from me before, but why not? Might as well mention it again. He's such a schmuck that he prevented the special edition from being released, the anniversary edition. Uh, there was going to have features and even had interviews with Richard Edlund and a few other people. There was going to be commentary track. And all of that was canceled because Steven Spielberg and his lawyers got involved and basically said, nope. Because apparently he directed part of the film or directed a lot of the movie. And that went against the DGA, Directors Association Guild, uh, uh, the Directors Guild Association. It went, it went, went against their rules at the time. Because he could only direct one movie a year at that point in time. And of course that was changed later. So he could direct more than one movie. And other directors can direct more than one movie a year. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's, that's rather interesting. Uh, I mean, from the uh, studio, actually. I, I think it was like a particular studio thing, if I remember correctly. But anyway, things were changed later because Spielberg wanted them to be changed. Why were they changed? Huh? Probably because Spielberg directed Poltergeist, or directed part of it at least. And I'm not the only one that's saying this because there's a friend of mine who sent me a message on YouTube. He spoke with somebody, and they even said the same thing. So... But apparently, uh, we can't even get a special edition on Blu-ray all these years later because Spielberg has still got to stick up his ass about this. It's been years later. In fact, you'd help your image by just being humble and be like, yeah, I, I kind of cheated things around. I kind of, I, 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 you know, abused my power a little bit. Um, but I want to be able to let the fans enjoy the film and the and, and you know, see the behind the scenes of this movie and and get the special edition uh, for the film that it deserves. Nope. Nope. His ego is too big and, and he's not going to do it. Uh, that's why we never see special edition for Hook. Because he doesn't like the movie. Also, he not only cock-blocked and canceled the special edition of Poltergeist. But he also canceled a book. Which is going to be like the making of book. The guy, the author, had actually interviewed Craig T. Nelson. He went all the way up to his home in Washington and interviewed him. And interviewed him about the film and got other interviews. But Steven Spielberg came in and found out about it and had his lawyers send him a cease and desist. That he wasn't even talking about Steven Spielberg at that time. He was interviewing Craig T. Nelson. So, I mean, this is all stuff you can find out on Poltergeist websites and stuff like that. But yeah, Spielberg is a schmuck. He, this image that he gives you on screen isn't necessarily true. And until he comes out in public and denies these things and says that this never happened and I see a Poltergeist special edition and I see somebody being able to do a special edition of Hook, I'm not going to buy what, what he's saying. I'm not going to buy his image. You're a schmuck. Uh, and so is all the rights owners and people who could just basically prevented Werewolf from being released. I mean, that sucks. It bites, 
bites my dick off, it bites your dick off. If you don't have a dick, it bites your pussy off. It sucks for everyone involved. And this, and that's how it is for all of these canceled projects. All of these DVDs or Blu-rays that have rights issues, like Fright Night Part 2, which will never get released because of the fucking Menendez brothers, uh, or something like Trick or Treat with Gene Simmons. Probably music rights. That's probably why it never get released. It got released in, U in the United States, you know, not in the U.S., outside the U.S., in Germany. The transfer was great, but the audio sucked. And for a film that the audio is really important, that's not good. But, yeah, I don't know what else to say except it's bullshit, all of it. It's all bullshit. And I hope you guys enjoyed this rant. And if you have any other titles that you know of, any other films that you know of that were canceled, or, well, I know The Keep, that's another one, because Michael Mann doesn't like it, and just refuses, and does not allow anybody to release it. And I've heard some people say that's not the case, but, because, like you said, oh, he was talked about, he mentioned it in, like, an interview in public one time, and he said that wasn't the case. I mean, he's in public, what do you think he's going to say? Why do you think the film is never... Not, why do you think Shout Factory, Scream Factory was not able to get the rights to it? It wasn't... Paramount, maybe it was Pair of Pricks. Maybe that's what it was. That could easily be it, be it because Paramount is a pair of pricks. That's why you don't have April Fool's Day on Blu-ray. Or well, another question is like, why the fuck do we not have a special edition of Beetlejuice? That's another question I gotta ask. But, uh... You know, that's a different topic altogether. What I'm talking about is canceled releases. Another one is Scrooged. Scrooge. There was like a spent you'll you'll love it edition, and it had a few features and stuff, and then all that just disappeared when it was released, for some reason. So, uh, yeah. So, please feel free to name any other canceled uh, movies on DVD or Blu-ray or TV series that you know of. They were supposed to come out. Uh, but they got canceled because of rights issues or because of uh, disputes with people who, you know, own the music rights and all of that. I, I would really like to hear your thoughts in the comments down below about that. And if you like this video, please go ahead and just fucking hammer that like button and definitely subscribe because I got plenty more of this kind of stuff coming in the future. So anyway, thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.